Hello, what's up guys? This is Joni Jurela yet again from Floorball Made Simple and we are back with another new video. This video will focus more on attacking without the ball movements and that is the fastest way to up your stats. Uh, in Floorball these days even the snipers and the ones that are more reliant on, on goal scoring they have become increasingly good on moving without the ball and in this video you will get plenty of tips on what to focus on your own improvement in order to be better when moving without the ball we'll begin this video by talking about situational roles or uh, playing situational roles as it's, it is uh, translated uh, directly from Finland uh, or Finnish speaking uh, but this is a very important key concept on improving your game as a player why I'm telling this uh, this relates uh, a little in, in that attacking without the ball phase but it is important to recognize that what all aspects there are in the game uh, in situational roles we're not talking about uh, playing positions that much that who is a left winger who is a center who is the right back left back uh, we're more focusing on the principle that everybody is attacking and everybody is defending it means that in modern floorball in the top levels you need to be able to defend well when you are a forward you have your own responsible player that you need to take care of and then you need to be able to participate and get involved into the attacking play if you are a defender as your uh, original or beginning uh, playing position in the field players are moving with a very wide range of motion in the field and many times the lowest defender for example the right defender might end up uh, handling the ball in the left corner in the deep areas in the field so the playing positions are not fixed anymore you need to be able to move with a wide range of motion and the situational roles are the first role uh, attacking with the ball second role attacking without the ball third role is defending against the player who is holding the ball and fourth role is defending against the player without the ball and as everybody can realize uh, there is only one player who is holding the ball and one player who is defending against the player with the ball because there is only one ball in the field and all the remaining four players in each team they are either attacking without the ball or defending without the ball no matter uh, what their original playing position was and in very high level floor ball it is essential uh, for the delays between shifting each row to be as small as possible so you need to be able to constantly change between every of these four roles and you need to be smooth on transitioning from one role into another and then a few words about levels of improving your game thank you for all the comments that i've had and i have had a few questions about that what are all the aspects that I can improve as a player? Well, here you see the list uh, of exactly that. So the levels of improving your own game as an individual and how you perform in the field can be dissected into these levels. And the first level is your own technique to perform the desired actions you want to do in the field. So, for example, if you want to be able to uh, do horizontal cutting passes in the field you need to first be able to pass the ball in that uh, direction and position uh, in a way that there is not much pressure and the space is quite huge because it is way harder to do that in the field when the uh, window of opportunity and time is only very small so you need to have the technical ability to perform that desired action after it we come more to the subject of this video which is the individual tactics part and that relates to your own individual decision making ability in the field in order to be a better part of the whole collective of the team then we come to the collaboration side with other teammates uh, 
some coaches see this as a part of the whole collective ta tactical team play that the whole team is doing. But I think that in the game you have these small glimpses of moments where only two or three players are the key players at the moment, that they are the most responsible for collab collaborating in that situation. So I think that the collaboration side, that when you go into a uh, situation in the field, that you need to be able to find the few key players in that precise moment and ways to collaborate with them. This is not an individual sport where you can only do your own decisions and only, only play with your individual tactics uh, in the field, but this is not a sport where only the team collective, this huge chunk of tactical play, is, is mostly emphasized. This is a game where you need to be able to recognize the situations and collaborate with the right key players in that specific moment. Then there is the tactical understanding of the whole tactical team play and the collective side, because you will be uh, almost forced to be able to understand what the team is trying to do together in the field. Because this is a team sport, you need to be able to understand the uh, instructions that the coach is giving, what we are trying to achieve as a unit, and then you need to be able to add on to that. So you need to be able to bring something more to the play that adds up. It makes the team, team play and the collaboration between all the five players better in the field. Then you have the ment mental abil abilities and I'm going to make a video on these a little later on, uh, but resilience, grit and ability to regroup yourself and your thoughts is a key point on that spectrum. And then in the last part you have the phys physical abilities to become a better athlete, faster, stronger, uh, etc., more endurance, but those are the easiest to manage in this sport. And now as we have covered the bigger picture of improving as a player and the, the all the levels uh, on, on how you can improve, we will focus more on the subject of this video. And this video will focus on the second role, which is attacking without the ball. And from those levels that we showcased earlier in that previous slide, we will focus most on the individual tactic side, on what range of decisions and alternatives you have in the field, and what the players are doing uh, in the top levels of floorball, and how do they collaborate with their teammates. Uh, please take, take in, in, in regard of um, the team play, what your team is trying to achieve as a unit, of course, it has a huge impact on that, what you can do in the individual tactics side, but it helps you out if you know what are all the alternatives that I can do without the ball in the field. And I try to emphasize those that have stood out the most in Finnish F-League uh, playoffs this season so far. Then we'll take a look on what sort of action you can do in the field when you are attacking without the ball. Well, first we come to the concept of providing support. So that means basically that you are moving without the ball in order to support your teammates and in a way that your team is able to maintain the control of the ball. So providing support, very basic concept. Then the second one is winning one versus one situations, which means that you are winning your own marker to go over and past him or her to win and occupy space. So basically, if we're thinking, thinking about football, um, it might be a situation where a player is running behind the uh, last defensive line and looking for those piercing passes. Uh, finding space and filling it. This means basically that you are scanning the field and finding those small gaps of spaces that you can move on and then to be able to score from that or to pass from that. Or your teammate has created somehow space in the field, you recognize that and then fill it. Then creating space without the ball to other players is a very important key aspect as well. And then the last is providing balance to the collective and this comes down 
to more advanced stuff in the high levels of floorball because you need to be able to play in a balanced way that your team is ready to defend right away if they lose the ball. And the last part of those given goal plays that everybody sees in the floorball fields today, that is uh, only my own statement and opinion, but I have been uh, coaching the offensive play in that way. So you have two sorts of given goal plays. The first one is the move where you pass and move. And that first movement, I call them first movements, that creates space for your set, or how does it, you, you create space for either other players to fill later on, or you get yourself unmarked and then you are able to score. So you either create more space to somebody else, or you are winning yourself uh, free in order to score. And then it comes uh, down to those second movements, which are the counter movements. One player passes to a direction and then moves, gives and goes the ball. He is not, not the one who is scoring, but another player is making a counter movement and filling with the right timing the space that the first movement opened up. And I, uh, my, my own uh, idea of that is separating those between each other and I estimate that those kind of second movements, counter movements, will increase in following years on floorball with a very, very high quantity. And then a little competition or a campaign, if you will. Uh, I have organized this subscriber and recommendation campaign, which basically means that any of you guys watching these videos have a chance to get an individual, a personal meeting with me through distance meeting, meeting uh, apps, and we can discuss your own improvement points as a player. If you have never had that kind of meeting with a coach, it is very, very good way to influence in your improvement as a player. So, if you want to have such a meeting with me, a 30 minute long distance sort of consultation meeting with me, where we discuss your own situation as a player and what you could work on to become even better on playing. You need to be able to lure five people to su subscribe to this channel. So get five people that you know, your teammates, colleagues, whoever, to subscribe to this channel, Floorball Made Simple, and then uh, post their names uh, and their nicknames in YouTube that who subscribe to this channel so I am able to recognize that who were you able to uh, lure in to this channel. So you can send th those nicknames uh, through Instagram DM or Facebook to me and then as I have verified that those became or those um, subscribers came from you then we will arrange the distance meeting and we will discuss your situation and improvement points as a player. If you want to have a more advanced meeting, please send video clips of your own games or your individual technique. You can do some technical stuff in training or at your home and send those clips to me through Facebook or Instagram so I will look up on those before the meeting and we will have even better meeting that way. So 30 minutes, totally free consultation from me. Get five subscribers to me and let's meet. And now let's dive in to the clips and the first, the first concept is providing support. I will not be commenting on every single one of these clips, not to the most obvious ones, but the uh, key and more important ones I will be commenting. In this video you can see this TPS player is supporting to the center, which opens up a good passing lay towards the center. They are able to play the pass to the center and then they will get out from the high pressure. This is an important one. Sometimes when you have found the space, only standing in the space is not enough. You need to be able to adjust your movement and move little sideways, sideways without the ball with few steps and you are able to find the spot and timing where to score. And in this clip exactly that happens.
This is a short but very important clip. Uh, this basically means that you need to be able to control your pace and your speed while you are moving without the ball. At every moment you cannot just sprint with full speed and, and, and expect the space and time to appear. You need to be able to accelerate, decelerate, stop, start, go. And Nico Salo is one of the best in the world to do that. So see, he is beginning the sprint with small steps and then decelerates a little bit. And now to the give and go place. And uh, first you will see the first movements that either will create space for another player or will free the player that is playing the give and go. And then to the second movements. And as I, as I mentioned, in these movements a player has already played the give and go and he has moved usually towards the goal and create a space and then there's another player coming to fill that space. You can see in this clip there's a small delay, should have been a little faster on that filling. Then yet again give and go and space is filled. Then shifting from the first roll to the second, so you are first holding the ball, then you pass it somewhere and you're moving uh, towards in the field and you need to be able to shift from those moments uh, very smoothly and be prepared to receive the ball at every moment. And, this, and in this clip you will see this awesome, awesome Nokia's KRP player Miska Mäkinen and watch what he does. Then receiving the pass in motion. So this basically means taking the first touch, but in today's floorball it is really important to take the first touch and receive the pass in motion. Here we will see two different kind of clips demonstrating exactly that. The first one uh, it, or in the first one, uh, the player receiving the ball will receive the ball with one-handed backhand grip and we will see what happens after that. The previous one, the one-handed backhand receiving, that, that is a good alternative, but in my opinion the way better alternative is to take the first touch into the free direction to the forehand side in a way that you are able to play and continue playing immediately. Then yet again supporting uh, is the subject here, but supporting towards the center in motion. I want to emphasize that more because if you are just going and standing still to the center you are easier to scan by the defending team and then find a mark. If you are filling the center in motion, you are way harder to defend against. And as you can see in the video, uh, when Finnish F-League team's player plays the first drop pass to the defender in the offensive zone offense, the player will most likely cut without the ball towards the center. That is a really good way to provide support and continuity to the game. And then we come more to the scoring part. Finding space when you are attacking without the ball is super important if you want to be able to rank up those scoring numbers of yours. And in these videos you will see how the players are finding the space in the scoring areas. This is very basic stuff as well, but you can see in the clip 
that the team is holding the ball in the middle zone offense phase and the player is creating without the ball the space to the wide areas, to the wide pockets. This is also about the supporting part, but here you will see providing width. The width and the wide direction in the field is really important uh, from the perspective of continuity in the game. And you can provide the width in very different ways. There is always some space in the wide pockets, in the wide areas, and you can fill it from the lower parts of the pocket or from the higher parts of the pocket. Either way you do it, you need to be able to provide width into the game. This is probably one of the most important things on how you can score more, go more goals as an attacker or as a defender. The players in top flo floorball are now making very long sprints and winning their own player and their marker. And you will see in the next clips on how the players are being able to win the first marker and sprint a very long sprint. By the way, in some clips they are sprinting almost 30 meters to win the space. And of this clip I need to emphasize a little more. This is a counter-attacking or a transition moment in Classic. And you will see Villa Lastica is doing this very old school traditional movement. When his team is winning the ball and he is the opposite side winger, he starts to drive towards the goal and then he gets a reward for it. So the key takeaway of these videos is that make the runs, make the sprints without the ball towards the goal scoring areas wherever the space um, is free. And now we're getting to the good stuff. In the first video you can see Heikkilä from Classic is doing a very very cool old fashioned uh, basketball hockey style a body feint with, with his body weight and body position. You will see that he has occupied the space in front of the goal, but the player is defending him uh, correctly in the situation. But then he makes a small feint or a dig with his body to the other side, but then turns to the next side to score. Really cool movement. You should be able to master this if you want to score. And in this part, you need to focus on really carefully because these are really important things. You can see that the classic player, Emily Salin, is positioning himself in front of the goal. But watch how he is protecting the space that he has first occupied. The defender is trying to cut the space out and push him away from the space. But he is just taking a wide stance. He is getting his butt down so he has a lower center of gravity. And then how ready he is to score with his blade. So filling and occupying the space is one thing, but totally owning the space in one versus one situation is a whole nother thing. And that is a like three meter long guy that is owning the space right in front of the goal. Here Salin does not score, but man, how, how is he able to own the space and create more space to others? In Finland we have this saying that 
You can buy milk from a grocery store, but you're going to score goals when you're in the goal or in front of the goal. So in these two clips, you will see two situations where the player first starts his movement from outside the play, but he comes in front of the goal and distracts the vision of the keeper. See, here the player has moved to the goal and in front of the goal, and once the shot is taken away, you will see that the vision might be a little hard for Torisva in the goal. And this was the video for today. Hey, thank you for watching again. And you know, guys, we did it in under 30 minutes. Who would have believed that? But hey, you have time. I forgot to mention this. In the subscriber and recommendation campaign that I mentioned earlier, you have one week of time. So it ends in the 27th of this month. So please uh, get involved in that campaign and get five subscribers to me and we will have a distance meeting. There you can see the social media channels where you can contact me and we can uh, arrange the meetings and I am happy to meet you. Have a good training week. Bye.